Okay, I'm going to take you to completely the opposite side of, of America and talk to you about the wildlife of California and Arizona and try and cover each in about 10 minutes. So it's going to be a whistle stop tour through what I think are two of the most uh, amazing places in America. Um, starting in, in Southern California, um, the tour that we run here um, goes in May and it visits some of the most diverse scenery and iconic national parks in America. Um, down here, there's lots of open space, very approachable wildlife, incredible landscapes, and it's home to you know, an incredible diversity of birds and mammals, lots of endemic species, um, like the Joshua trees you can see on this opening slide here, the um, endemic species of red-shouldered hawk on the left, and the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep on the right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this tour, um, is a, is a unique um, exploration, a traverse, if you like, across the bottom of California, starting in Los Angeles and ending in Las Vegas and covering all aspects of Southern California uh, and the journey. Um, we start in Los Angeles and head out to the Channel Islands National Park to the west, um, a boat trip across um, amazing waters where we get cetaceans and um, seals and lots of uh, seabirds. And to explore these islands that have lots of endemic species because they've been isolated for over 30,000 years. More about that in a second. Um, we then work our way down the coast through very built up areas around Los Angeles and down to San Diego where the tropical um, palm tree forests and lots and lots of um, shorebird uh, habitat, coastal scrub, oak forest woodlands with their attendant species of, of birds, mammals and butterflies. Um, <clears throat> before then we start to work our way inland along the Mexican border over a big mountain range called the Laguna Mountains, where we stop at the Pacific Crest Trail um, and hike a bit of the uh, Pacific Crest Trail uh, for a morning, um, right when we're transitioning um, across from the coastal um, influence to the more desert influence of inland California. And we enter the Colorado Desert there with its um, incredible cacti and um, it does it adapted species such as the teddy bear choya, which is up on the top left there, taken Anza Borrego Desert State Park, which is just north of the Salton Sea that you can see on the map there. Salton Sea is one of my favorite places in America. It's a fantastic bird migration location. It's below sea level, um, lots and lots of um, shorebirds and um, pelicans and grebes and things like that there as well. And from there, we actually head to some of the most iconic parks in America, Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, we leave the Colorado Desert and head into the Mojave Desert where we go to Mojave National Preserve, into Death Valley National Park where we go to the lowest point in the uh, US, Badwater Basin, you can see there 282 feet below sea level, a big salt lake in the middle of uh, Death Valley. Before we then head out into Nevada, and to a sky island, <clears throat> which is a, a very small mountain range protruding out of the desert, where we go up to a completely different habitat, 10,000 feet above sea level. Um, and this sky island is fantastic for um, very unique wildlife that is only found um, on that mountain. And so that's a very quick review of a two week tour through the best of um, diversity in Southern California. So with that, let me just go on to some of the species that we might see. Um, during our trip, <clears throat> starting with the birds. Obviously, as I said, we start with a, with a boat trip where we get seabirds such as this black vented shearwater, um, <clears throat> very common, <clears throat> excuse me, very commonly seen from the boat, along with lots of um, phalaropes and skewers and terns and gulls and those types of things. It's, it's um, also cetaceans seem pretty commonly on that trip too. And once we get to the islands, um, there's about, um, 20,000 species all told of, of endemic plants, insects, birds, mammals, et cetera, et cetera, on those islands. Um, Matthew showed you the Florida scrub jay. This is their equivalent on the very far west, the island scrub jay, uh, which is only found on two of those islands, um, very rare. And um, they're also um, ringed and, and population monitored. So we'll do our best to find those. Um, 
once we've left the, the islands, we spend some time in the coastal area of California, where um, the oak forests are particularly lovely, and they're home to species like this um, nuttles woodpecker. Here on the bottom left, it's a bit like our lesser spotted woodpecker, I suppose, similar type of core, but just a stunning bird. Um, and we have a lot of, of time looking at water birds along the coast, but also inland, as I said, at the Salton Sea, birds like this Clark's grebe, um, very similar to the Western grebe, which is also very common. Um, in those areas. Now migration will be in full spring when we at full uh, pelt and when we go in spring and lots of shorebirds is, is um, migrating through. Um, we could see over 20 maybe even 25 species of, of shorebirds from the rocky coast specialists to birds like this western sandpiper. Of course they're all in their amazing breeding finery. Um, they're not in their, in their drab winter plumage. They, my wife, Jane, who's been talking in a minute, says they wear their tuxedos. They look really posh and smart um, rather than their, their jeans as they're just slouching around. So they're a fantastic uh, part of the tour. Um, also flycatchers like this Hammond's flycatcher are moving through. Um, warblers, bottom left here, this is a Virginia's warbler, um, which reaches its westernmost breeding on Mount Charleston, just outside of Las Vegas and we'll, we'll do our best to find those at high altitude and obviously lots of desert special birds like this black-throated sparrow here. <clears throat> it's a very common um, regularly seen species um, in all of the deserts in the southwest of the US um, but one of my personal favorite um, birds of this trip. But this tour is a, is a wildlife tour and in addition to the probably over 200 species of birds we'll get on that trip. Um, it's ex excellent for mammals as well from um, coastal species I've mentioned already, cetaceans, but um, pinnipeds like this California sea lion at the top right um, of, the, um, of the screen here is particularly common. Um, you know, we're, we're visiting built up areas too around um, San Diego and Las Vegas where raccoons are pretty common. Uh, obviously they're, they're also throughout this habitat, but you know, we, ha we stand a chance of seeing those. Once we get into the, the deserts proper, actually, we start to run into things like the coyotes that you can see in the middle of the screen there. They are in the cities as well, um, but I like seeing them out in their natural habitat in the desert. Um, Black-tailed jackrabbit at the bottom there is a relative of our hare. Um, they're also found from the coast into the deserts. Um, very, very large um, rabbit, uh, lovely to see. And so from, from large coyotes all the way to really, really small endemic chipmunks like this Palmer's chipmunk, which is only found on Mount Charleston outside of Vegas. And um, we do a lovely walk through a fantastic uh, valley to look for those little guys that are just uh, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> So butterflies are also um, fantastic in, in California. Lots of different butterflies that we might see. Uh, I'm particularly partial to hair streaks myself, the top right butterfly here, great purple hair streak. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's got the, the false um, head, if you like, at the, of its tail where those two um, antennae pretend to be um, its head. So if a predator attacks it, it can uh, just keep living fine. Um, on the left, bears metal mark. I love metal marks actually as well, but for a different reason because they don't really move very much. And so you can get great pictures um, up close. Um, they they favour particular plants they, they like. And so I really like metal marks for that reason. Uh, bottom left, um, Western giant swallowtail is the biggest butterfly in North America. Um, so a good chance of seeing those. They were only identified as a separate species in 2014. So a relatively recent split. And then of course, um, the Western Monarch, which um, this year now is having the best um, year for many, many, many seasons. In fact, there's over, from the counts that we've been, we've been seeing on the West Coast now, there's over a hundred fold higher population this year than there was last year, which is just fantastic to see them bouncing back, probably because of the, the wonderful rains that have been happening in the, in the Southwest, both in monsoon last year, but also in the winter. So that's really good news. And we should see monarchs, Western monarchs, which are the population west of the Sierra Nevada mountains in California uh, on this trip. No, no discussion of going to some, some of the deserts in the US could be complete without reptiles. And uh, there's a lot of reptiles in California from fantastic zebra-tailed lizard in the top left there, 
through different types of snakes like gopher snake, bottom left, uh, which predate on other snakes like rattlesnakes. The one in the middle there is a Pacific uh, rattlesnake. Um, there are seven species in California, but Pacific is one of the, the commonest and we'll do our best to try and find those. And then one of my favorite lizards, the bottom right there, Southern alligator lizard. And it's quite a big lizard actually, very charismatic, I think, I like looking at those. Um, and then amphibians like um, the Baja California tree frog. This is uh, what's given us our um, societal thought of what frogs sound like, which is rabbit. These are the frogs that give that call. And they, we, we've adopted that as our call of frogs because they're found near Hollywood. And so their call has been used in many a film score over the years. Um, and they're actually very, very small, quite hard to find. Um, but we've got some good sites for those, so they should be uh, uh, good, to, good to see. So um, we also, sorry, I don't know what's going on with my slides here. There are lots of other specialities that I'd like to talk about. I don't really have time on this, we should stop tour, but um, Ren Tit on the top left there, that's a, a coastal specialist. Um, beautiful charismatic bird. We also see hummingbirds. There's quite a few hummingbirds in California. This is an Allen's hummingbird. The ones down in the southwest, they don't migrate. They're there all year. Um, so that's that's great to see. And endemic birds like California thrasher, bottom right, California toey, um, are pretty common. And then this beautiful island fox. It's really small. It's about the size of our cat. Um, very rare. Um, only found on the islands, as I said earlier. And they're um, radio uh, collared. So um, the, the scientists who have studied them know, know where they are at all times, but uh, these guys are absolutely beautiful and we'll, we'll do our best to find those when we go to the islands. So um, please um, come to California with us. Our next tour is uh, in May this year. Um, we might even see the border wall like you can see right there um, as, we, as we travel along um, between um, California and Mexico. towards. Um, Arizona, which is the next destination that I'd like to talk about, um, a completely different <clears throat> set of wildlife um, in a fabulous state, um, a state that Jane and I call home. Our home is there, our house is there, and in Tucson. And Arizona is one of the best states in America for birds, for reptiles and butterflies, and particularly things like this um, Rivoli's hummingbird on the left, one of up to 13 or 14 species of hummingbirds that we may see in Arizona, the Western Diamondback rattlesnake on the bottom of the picture there. Fantastic snake, <coughs> excuse me. Um, one of the commonest snakes in Arizona actually that we see very regularly. And then um, Arizona state butterfly there, two-tailed swallowtail, um, really big, nice uh, butterfly. Just a few of the iconic species that we might see on our, on our trip around Arizona. <coughs> So um, actually, I'd like to do a quick thanks to David Attenborough and his discussion last night in Green Planet of the Snoring Desert and his uh, shameless advertising for this tour. I don't actually need to give this presentation, I don't think, given what he was talking about. Um, but nevertheless, um, our tours um, in Arizona focus on the Sonoran Desert. Um, primarily, uh, we fly into Phoenix, at the top of the map there, and we spend most of our time exploring right along the Mexico border, <coughs> the sky islands of this desert include, and you can see those marked in green on this map. These are the high mountains that are above the, the plateau, sorry, the, the flat desert with up to seven or 8,000 feet difference in elevation between those two habitat types. And so you can imagine as you go up the different levels of, of uh, elevation, you get very different habitats. But the iconic part of the Sonoran Desert is mediated by the fact it has two rainy seasons, one right now and one as a monsoon um, in uh, July and August. And so we have two different breeding seasons, two different seasons for wildlife to, to really um, take advantage of this plethora of water that happens um, during the year. The saguaro cactus flowers in April and May, you can see the top right there, the top left iconic scenery that, that you would have seen on Dave Lambert's program last night. Um, so we spend our time exploring um, all, four of the most um, interesting uh, um, sky islands southeast of Tucson, which is where our house is, 
Um, and if you can see, there's lots of amazing scenery, um, such as Cave Creek, which we visit on the right hand side there. We stay in uh, lots of different types of accommodation, mainly small um, inns and lodges that are privately owned uh, by people who, who we know very well and um, fantastic right in the middle of nowhere type of places give a really good feel for what the Sonoran Desert is like. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly whip through some of the species that, that we might uh, see. Again, um, birds are, are one of the uh, highlights. I, I, my birds are my passion and so it's one of the highlights for me is looking for trogons such as this elegant trogon here on the left, um, which is one of the most iconic species in Arizona that birders from all over America try and see. And uh, we spend some time looking for those, a beautiful bird. Um, as I said earlier, hummingbirds are a big focus of the, of the tours we do in, in Arizona, like this stunning male Costas hummingbird with bright purple iridescent uh, plumes and mustache. They do this amazing display um, in the spring um, in April, which, which we will be able to see. Now, obviously in the desert areas, there's lots of different desert species. One of, the, one of the most familiar is the cactus wren, the largest wren in the world. They're perched on top of a, of a um, teddy bear choya that David Attenborough talked about um, last night, but these are very highly adapted. In fact, you find the breeding in those teddy bear choyas quite regularly. And then um, one of the features of the birds here is that many of them are found nowhere else in America and are easier to see than where some of them breed in Mexico and things like the Mexican spotted owl there just get into America in this corner of Arizona and, and we look for those um, on, on our tours as well. But this, this is a, a, a general wildlife tour uh, discussion and so there are lots of mammals in the desert. You know, people think the desert doesn't have much going on but actually it's incredibly biodiverse. Um, over 2000 species of plants in the Sonoran Desert alone um, and so they provide food for herbivores, such as the javelina, you can see at the top right there, which we see pretty regularly. Um, at the bottom, the desert adapt, highly desert adapted mammals, such as Harris's antelope squirrel, which hardly ever have to drink, and they use their long tail as a sunshade during the day, which is pretty cute. Um, <clears throat> lots of nocturnal activity in Arizona as well, and some amazing nocturnal mammals, such as uh, this ringtail, uh, which is like a tree dwelling, mammal relative of the raccoon, um, but we often uh, look for them up in the trees scampering around, but they also come to hummingbird feeders and cheat a little bit. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, and there are predators with all, the, all these rodents and animals around there are predators, coyotes and bobcats. Actually, in my view, Arizona is one of the best states in America to see bobcats. So this guy um, has actually just finished drinking out of our water bowl at our, at our house and I snap this, this picture out of our kitchen window. So they're around and, and, and you can never um, guarantee, but um, it's one of the best places we've found to, to see bobcats. Like California, um, Arizona is home to hundreds of species of butterfly, over 250 species of butterfly in the Sonoran Desert alone. Um, again, I had to put my hair streak picture in here. The one on the left is beautiful green and orange hair streak is Arizona hair streak found at high altitudes. We'll, we'll do our best to find those. Um, the beautiful Arizona sister in the top right. These are one of my favorites as well, actually. Um, they glide effortlessly up and down oak line canyons up in the, up in the sky islands. They're just a wonderful butterfly to watch. Um, and then the, the, the very interesting looking butterfly on the bottom there is an American snout with a big long proboscis. Um, very common last year because of the incredible record-breaking monsoons that we had, millions and millions of American snouts flying around in the air at all elevations, all altitudes, covering bushes, and so they're a delight to see. Um, California is home to lots of reptiles, but Arizona is like the kingdom of reptiles, and uh, we do our best to try and find as many as we can, such as the spectacular Gila monster, at the top left, the only um, venomous reptile in America. And interestingly, actually, AstraZeneca uh, markets a diabetes medicine made from one of the components of its venom. Um, on the top right there, we have, um, <coughs> excuse me, Yarrow spiny lizard, a high altitude um, lizard. Uh, that's pretty common that we see. Rattlesnakes, 
13 species of rattlesnakes in Arizona. We do go out looking for them on the trails and on night drives. Um, this is a black-tailed rattlesnake on the bottom here, quite a docile, lovely uh, rattlesnake that, that we'll look for. Um, and then also um, David Abra talked about desert, to desert um, tortoise last night. You saw a picture of that. This is a, a relative, a desert box turtle, a specialist of the Snoran Desert we'll, that we'll look for too. Because of the two rainy seasons, there's lots of amphibians as well, like the goggle-eyed couch's spadefoot toad on the top left, which you might have heard about. It only comes out once a year from its, its underground burrows to breed um, in the rain. And the amazing statistic, they can eat enough in one day to let, let it survive for the rest of the year. Um, so that we'll, we'll look for those. Some very range-restricted amphibians like the uh, Chiricahua and leopard frog on the bottom left. And then there's some that we like to search for along along streams and banks um, in, in some of the canyons in, in America, uh, like in Arizona, like this canyon tree frog. This is the Halloween slide. I nearly didn't put it in, but um, you know, when you're in the desert, you have to look for small things as well. And uh, these are fascinating and amazing creatures uh, to look for, such as the desert hairy scorpion on the left there, that's up against our house wall. Uh, amazingly, in a spotlight night, night walk that we do, uh, it's about four inches long. Um, the least venomous of all the scorpions in Arizona. A beautiful desert blonde tarantula on the bottom. They're pretty common. Very docile, lovely to watch um, spiders uh, in the desert as they come out at dusk. And then um, the giant desert centipede, which is about eight inches long, big, big um, centipede, amazing desert specialists that um, are normally nocturnal, uh, but you can sometimes see those in the day if you're, if you're very lucky. And finally, um, there are some very, very special species that, that take a lot of work, but um, sometimes we see them, um, such as Montezuma quail. Um, sometimes they're on the side of the road like this guy, um, but sometimes they, we, we just don't find them. Red-faced warbler, sorry, my slides are all over the place. Red-faced warbler, um, high altitude uh, warbler there that lots of American birders want to see, um, and beautiful um, warbler that um, happens to be quite close to Tucson. And then the Sonoran Desert Toad, again, a specialist of the Sonoran Desert that comes out in the rainy season. So um, with that, I will close um, my quick tour around California, Arizona. Uh, we'd love to welcome you to come to the, the Sky Islands and the Sonoran Desert that you can see there on the top left picture. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to see horned lizards like this really real horned lizard at the bottom right here on, uh, on our tours this year. We 